Hi guys, welcome back to chapter four here, where we're going to look at a visual guide and how that can aid our EQ decisions. We've just looked at how a spectral analyzer can really help, um, you know, back up what we're hearing. Of course, it's all about what our ears hear, but sometimes having a guide, a further tool, um, you know, in your toolbox to sort of back up your decisions can be really useful. I still sometimes might go to a gig where I am, you know, live sound gig, I occasionally do, and there might be a trombone or an oboe, and I might just not quite remember where those main frequencies are, where to start tuning that. And when you've got 20 different instruments, you know, you want to have a little bit of insight sometimes. And this five page guide that you've got in the course, the PDF, as you'll see, we'll go and have a look at it in a minute. It gives you some characteristics specific to each instrument. You know, for example, where the warmth of a viola might be or where, you know, a certain character or tone of an oboe might be. And so these tips will really give you insight when you've got your EQ open, where you might look at start tuning. You know, if you want to add more um, air and shine to an instrument, we'll have a look at the guide and see what it suggests and maybe start tuning there. If you want to add more warmth, have a look and maybe start tuning there. And in this printout, it prints out quite nicely. Hopefully you'll all stick it on your wall. Um, pretty colors, also matching the energy of sound. We're gonna have a look more detail on the screen, but it will give you where to start tuning some very common um, instruments used in dance music particularly, and in a, you know, a mix down in general. So let's go ahead and go over it in a bit more detail and see what we can learn um, to aid our decisions with EQ. So jumping right into it now, let's have a look at using other EQ aids to help get a balanced mix or tone. And as I just explained, we've got this lovely colorful chart here that I did for you. And Let's have a look a bit closer now at how this can really help us when we're stuck for making decisions with our EQ. And it's got some key words, I think, in here that are very important and get used a lot when mixing, mastering, generally talking about music, people use these words. Well, we can apply these words to an actual um, part of the frequency spectrum normally. Um, you know, there's going to be some debate what some people consider um, presence or sibilance or things like this or what area it exactly is, but this guide, I've, I've applied what I think the area is. If we have a look here down on the bottom, we've got our, at the very bottom, we've defined it into regions, sub-bass, bass, low mids, mid-range, high mids, and high frequencies. That's your basic EQ bands, if you like, or ranges of the frequency spectrum. And as we can also see, the colors represent if you like, um, the energy of the sound, red being a heavier energy, and then up to pink being those high frequencies. So it's, it's hopefully quite intuitive. You've got the 20 hertz here at the lower end of the hearing spectrum and 20 kilohertz at the high end. So that's our hearing range. And this is everything within it. And we've got from sub bass, analog kicks, acoustic kicks, a lot of common instruments that you're always working with um, are in this chart. And here we've put the keyboard to show you what frequencies of the keyboard correspond also to these areas of the chart. But, you know, for example, this lower area, it's often referred to as being boomy or someone say you want, you want the track to be warmed up or you want more punch, you want more bottom, you want more weight, you want more power. All of these words are often used and it can be a bit um, confusing to know where to look at in those regions and where to start. So for example, I've just thrown together something here um, in five minutes just for fun so that we can have a look at how we might use the chart to get a better balanced sound here. Um, we've got some congas, we've got a guitar, we've got a bit of bass, um, an acoustic kick and an analog kick just to show you the difference some effects or just a little effects bit here and a little bit of keys um, could have put anything in here I just thought I'd throw some common things in and if we go straight away I've put an EQ on the master channel and not done anything to it yet 
But let's just have a look. If we look at our guide, I'll press play and let you hear. And if we have a look here, and let's say we want to add some warmth to this, what's playing now, we're going to have a look at the range between 100 and 250 hertz. So 100, somewhere around there. Let's disable it. So as a guide, that's what it means. Um, your EQ can directly relate to some of these keywords. If you want to add some uh, presence, here's where you might look because, you know, as we can see with our guide, that's where it is. So it's designed to sort of give you that intuition if, you, if you're not really thinking about it um, clearly. And so we have a look further. We've got our instruments and as we know now that the instruments are made up of the fundamental frequencies um, and then our harmonics and so this larger bulb section here represents where the fundamentals might be found of this instrument so this bass guitar here we can look that from you know this region in between sort of say 50 hertz and 200 or so we're going to find fundamental frequencies and wherever you see this little circle all right, I've set that as the sort of intuitive point to start tuning the recommended starting point to find a sweet spot. So let's try that out now. Um, we'll bypass this because this is on the master channel and we're just showing you the effect there. But if we go to, let's say, the congas, I'm going to solo them. Now, what does our guide say? Our guide says... Congas, here we are. It says the recommended starting point to find the sweet spot might be around about between 400 and 600 hertz. Now, I must stress that it's going to vary a lot between um, sounds and recordings and the microphones used, and it is just a guide, but if it gets you in the ballpark, you know, that's that's what we're aiming for here. You've already got um, your spectral analyzer that we've looked at in the last chapter, and this is a further way we can go and sort of intuitively apply our EQ. So congas, we said between 450 and 600 hertz to sort of find that fundamental. Pressing play now. And if I go... To a big boost here, 450 to 600. And there's a different conga loop at the end just to hear how it will differ uh, with a completely different sound. You will have to tune it according to the sound. But as a reference guide, that's pretty much the sweet spot somewhere around about there. I'm just going to bypass this also, this high pass filter, and there's not really much happening down there. You're getting a low fundamental at about 250, and so if we go back to the chart, we see that the fundamentals do go all the way down to there, so 250. So you know, in this case, probably your sweet spot is around about there, 400, 450 or so. Um, if you know, if you want to give them a bit of presence in your mix or you want to pull some out, you're going to be looking at around about there. So then we also know from this chart, looking at the congas again, all the way up until 10 kilohertz or so where we've got harmonics and so extra tonal activity happening there. Now most instruments do have activity in the high end and it's very important as we discussed with our kick drums and everything. It's also very important. 
Um, so this will definitely help you. Also, we've got the PDF to look at. I'll just quickly give one more example with our acoustic kick here. Pull up an EQ, have a look at the chart, have a look at the acoustic kick, and it says somewhere around 100 hertz might be our starting point to find the sweet, sweet spot. It says the fundamentals are going to be between 65 and sort of 110, 120. Um, so that's our main region, and anything above that will be harmonics. Um, so I'm going to try and find the sweet spot. According to the guide, I want to start around... 120. An acoustic kick's uh, quite a complicated sound. It's, it's got a lot of tonal areas, so it is a lot different to an electronic kick. So when you want to find the sweet spot, you do have to really decide which area you want to boost. But yeah, 120 was certainly sweetening the sound. If you wanted that more depth, uh, of course, more chest rumble, more weight power, more punch, you're going to have to go a little bit lower. So that's pretty much how this guide works. Um, as I say, very useful when you're working with a whole track to think about things differently. And just to give you a starting point, now let's move on to have a look at the five page PDF. Now, as I work as a uh, mix engineer and sound engineer, various things quite often, I often have something like this with me when there's a strange instrument like a trombone or something, as I said at the start, um, just to see where the range is. And this, this PDF points that out. Um, if you're doing the video course, of course you'll print it out and you know, can be very handy, even if you're very experienced, because often you really, you don't remember all of these things. And if I can look that a French horn has some formats between at 340, 750 hertz, 3.5 kilohertz, that's very useful information in making an EQ decision. Um, I can have a look at a viola and see that around 200 hertz might add some warmth and fullness. So some good key points um, and characteristics within this um, if we go up and have a look at our kicks, we've just been working with an acoustic kick drum, and that tells me the range, which we just worked on, the pressure point, the fullness, which we covered in our kick chapter, the harmonics. Um, you know, the, this is very useful too. The attack, the click, the small speaker definition, the area we might boost for that. Let's have a look at that quickly. 3 to 8 kilohertz. So yeah, we can hear straight away that that's adding the attack. That's the sound that's going to penetrate on those small speakers. So, you know, this can help you. You, you don't want to get too confused with it. You don't want to be, you know, trying to add warmth to everything. You've got to still think about things logically. And as I stress, sound choice is the most vital thing. Um, you know, choosing sounds that will balance across the spectrum so that you have sounds that fill this area, sounds that fill this area, and not 15 sounds that fill this this area because that'll overload the track. It'll, it'll, relate it, it'll end up in a muddy sound or, you know, in this case, um, too full or something like that. Another example we'll have a quick look at is, is when we're working with the full track. I've also put in this guide... Uh, as I work chiefly as a mastering engineer, when you're working with a full track, if we go to the end of the guide, we've got some good little tips here that say things like a cut at 250 hertz can seem like a boost at 5 kilohertz. So by removing some of that area here, this bottom, this fullness, this warmth, um, it can actually feel like a presence boost. Okay, so sometimes rather than just adding the presence here, we achieve it in a different way. So if your track is sounding 
muddy and clouded and full, you might want to pull some frequencies out um, in, in the region that it corresponds to. So generally in around, in around this region. So yeah, some great tips there. Um, little bits and pieces. We explain the human ear sensitivity, basically saying that the most sensitive region of the human ear is from two to six kilohertz. It's pretty well explained there. Nice and simple, but it all helps. You can look into it in, in further detail. We've also got some points on the general or the whole track. For example, the sub bass region, 16 to 65 hertz. Um, the thump in a kick drum. Too much equals a flabby mix and flapping speakers. Your speakers don't like it. It sounds terrible. Too little, a mix with not enough weight, oomph or depth. So just some, some key points. And if you ever work as a live sound engineer and someone walks in with a flute, you're going to know straight away that these are some areas, for example, that might help you tune that sound on your mixing desk and, you know, be able to make it shine, be able to make it work. If it sounds harsh and nasal, as we see here, nasal, harsh, then we'd want to look at pulling some of these regions out, 2 to 4 kilohertz. So I hope I'm helping you to start to understand how to use these guides um, and not get too confused. Male vocal, female vocal. Um, we're looking at a sweet spot, a little bit lower for the male vocal, obviously, um, as it's deeper in tone and fundamental frequencies, a little bit lower also. So let's just have one more look at the whole track and see what effect we have when we tune certain areas. Take it off solo. What if I want to add some air and sparkle? Well, I need to create a boost above 10 kilohertz. Here it is here, the air and sparkle, the sheen. Often something done in a mastering area. A little bit of sparkle added. Now, as I said, these sounds have just been, th been put in without actually having EQ'd them. So guitar here, for instance, is just inserted. We've just put a high pass filter. I will then go and get my my guide and have a look for the guitar here it is and i want to add some body warmth or maybe some presence so if i want to add the warmth let's have a listen do we need warmth or do we need presence i think the bass is providing the warmth so i want to add a little bit of presence and according to my guide, we're going to find some presence from 2 to 5 kilohertz. Okay, so I'm going to go from 2 to 5 and give it a little nudge there. Okay, that definitely works. It comes out more present, it's more forward in the mix. Bypass. But you have to be very careful not to overdo things because your ears like the sound of it initially. Um, but generally go up until it's very noticeable and then take a bit off because, you know, it's very easy to get carried away with your EQ sounds. Don't underestimate how much an EQ can change the sound and remember how powerful a tool it is when working with the whole mix. It's an extremely important tool in mastering and when working with the whole mix you, you really have to be careful because you are altering the balance of everything. 
And that is the point of EQ balance equalization. So there we have it. Um, put some sounds together yourself. Have a play around with the the two guides. Start tuning them with the sweet spot, the fundamental, and see if you can sort of make a balance using that for extra information. Along with, of course, your spectral analyzer. You'll be making great mixes in no time. Um, again, it's a lot to get your head around and a lot to cover, but I hope I've done it justice and that these guides will be helpful for you to download, print out, and be a little bit more familiar with some of those specific areas in music, in the, in the instruments, in the tone. And you can use keywords to sort of know what you're doing and approach the mix or instrument tone um, very logically. Okay, guys, catch you in the next chapter, and thanks for watching.